friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Um Like Anime Podcast. I am joined by my buddy Tony. Hello. And my name's George. I can't remember if I said that. But uh, we're back again to talk about the spring season of uh, episodes. A new crop has just uh, come out. That's right. It's finally episode one time. We have finally reached season one, episode one, after... How many episodes have we put out prior to season one, episode one? Um, yeah, it's we're, after, we're we're back on track. Yeah, after after a few, you know, a, a little bit of a rough start, and then uh, you know, obviously the teaser where we go over all the shows that we're going to be watching. Which, uh, if you haven't listened to that, uh, that's all right. You can just listen to us talk about the shows now. So don't worry about it. Um, something worth mentioning is uh, we did have a, a a special episode that came out on Easter with our our friend Mike. Uh, where we talked about last season's uh, second season, the second season of a show that came out last. I'm saying this all wrong. It's the finale. Yes. Um. We, we we talked about the entirety, first and second seasons of uh, The Promised Neverland, That's Yakusoku right. no Neverland. Um, and we did, you know, how many, how long was it? Like two and a half hours? Yeah, two hours. Yeah, just yeah. over two hours. So between the three of us, yeah. we talked for two and a half hours about um, the first and second season, you know, leaning heavily on the second season since it was the most recent one and it was the thing that we had the most things to say about. Um, but anyway, our minds. We, won't, we won't be covering that show in tonight's podcast uh, as we wrap up uh, the winter 2021 season um, because we did a whole episode of its own about it. So Yeah, check it out. But I think we're probably going to start off with um, new anime. And we only have a few episodes to uh, talk about today, but yeah. So this is this uh, episode is going to cover everything that came out prior to the first real week, um, up to Friday, April second. Uh, up to and including, I guess I should say, Friday, April second, uh, and our next episode that will be coming out on the ninth. Um, we'll be talking about everything that comes out on Saturday because there's a whole ton of it. Um, and then we're going to have an episode come out on the 11th that we'll be covering everything um, from Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't know. There's this whole spreadsheet. Yeah. We're going to talk about some episodes, and the next time it'll be some different episodes. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> with this one, I guess we should start off with the big thing that everyone's excited about, except not the thing that they're actually excited about because in this episode, we're talking about My Hero Academia Season 5, Episode 0. Yeah. So that little, um, hey, let's meet the characters again um, because you don't remember them from a year ago when we last saw them, I guess. Yeah. I had heard uh, from you um, mm -hmm. that of what to expect from this episode, and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I'm still watching, of course. And and then I did, but my expectations were quite low, and and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, to your point, there's not a lot that happens, but I completely, I mean, we're going to spoilers, I suppose, but I've completely forgotten the end of the previous season, which mm. uh, happens just in the last episode, and it's I don't know, it's kind of brief, but it's uh, Endeavor, who is now the number one hero, um, fighting uh, one of the Nomus, I think it's Nomu, yeah, uh, giant beast creatures that the League of villains is is experimenting and creating um and it's a, it was a pretty awesome fight and they so they recap that in this and i uh, literally did a double take and was like oh i completely forgot about that um <laughs> they, they very briefly recapped it the main yes. the main part of the episode is not that. yeah but they like, showed they showed like the the coolest parts of the fight and i was like dang that was that was hmm. that was a cool fight that i completely forgot about and then yes they introduce they do this whole thing of they're, they're doing like a emergency drill yeah a training exercise sort yeah. of thing and it's just a, in service of like reintroducing who each of the students are in class 1a and what their powers are and they get to they're all part of a team now you know they're actually working together and it's how they work as a unit and yeah and i mean i'm, I'm glad they did that because i forgot what that green-haired kid's name was you know the green-haired one I'm trying to think is he in the class I think it means bug or something in japanese <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. And then there's that guy that's like the fire and ice. I don't know. I can't remember his name either. Oh, Todoroki? Yeah. Hmm. That's the joke, George. I'm just oh. saying things that I already know. Oh, okay. Deku. Like... Deku has green hair. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. So you're being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I, I was. Well... <laughs> I baited you in. I'm sorry. 
I bought it. I bought it. You, you, your <laughs> acting is impeccable. Um, no, I don't. I, I honestly don't think I forgot any of the names of any of the main characters. Maybe some of the side. Yeah, you know. I appreciate it. For, yeah, for some of those, um, those other characters, I don't get like a lot of you know shine. But um, yeah, actually, I don't know. There was a few parts, a few moments. The way they kind of introduce everyone, they do like they're all contributing to this crisis, this fake crisis. Uh, you know, sort of that they're trying to handle. Like, you know, what would they really do in this situation? And every each person has a moment where they contribute and like do something, you know, worthwhile and, you know, of worth. Uh, and then they do like a freeze frame, like right in the middle of them doing it and show their name and like what their power is and what their their superhero name is. Um, but I don't not all of them, but the, I, I'm trying to remember specifically, but there's a few where it like kind of got me. I mean, of course, like Deku, um, but there's a few others where it was just like, yeah, Froki, I don't know, like it kind of <laughs> got me. I was like, all right, I'm ready, let's do this. I'm I'm back in my hero. It's been a Fro- while. Froki. Froki. Yeah. With P's, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Froki's, Reminds me of the Froki's that Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they're one and the same in my head. Mm. <laughs> okay. But yeah, were you? I, I was so I was kind of entertained and and reinvigorated by this, even though there wasn't much to grab onto. But it sounds like you were a bit annoyed and oh, I didn't, just... I didn't hate it. It was just, it was, you know, like a, a mouthful of air. You just don't really notice it, you know? Mm. Yeah. They, they, so the, the beginning, they sort of teased, um, the ending of last season Then they had this big thing where they just did things, you know, to do things that have no impact on the overall story and don't matter at all. Um, so that they could throw up the character cards and reintroduce everybody. And then at the end, they teased the next episode, which um, I guess we shouldn't even go into what they teased at the end of that episode uh, without yeah. going into episode one. Um, so I guess tune back in in uh, about four days if you want to. No, not four days, two days. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll yeah. be talking about episode one of My Hero Academia in the next episode, which will be coming out on April 9th. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add about? Uh, that's about it. Out. You know, not much else to say. Okay. Um, then we can move on to the next one. I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet of notes here. Or not spreadsheet, but my... You have, do you know what the next show is? Uh, next is a show I have not seen, General Manager of Baby. And I also have not seen it because it is not available anywhere. Oh, as so this yet. is uh, not picked up. They So it's... I don't think it's an ONA. It it was broadcast. It was broadcast on Japanese television, um, but they basically, it, it's five minute episodes and there's eight of them and they just dump them all in a block. Mm. Um, and it, yeah, it doesn't look like anyone has picked it up for the uh, subtitling. I can't find it anywhere, even through my less than legal means of finding things. So, well, you know, it's should. something I might have to try and find later. It needs to go on another list. Yeah, I, it should probably be. Mm, taken off this list for now, I guess. Uh, but after that, we got uh, Joran, pr- the Princess of Snow and Blood. Oh, and you have seen this one, I think, right? I have. All right. And this is episode one of Joran that we're going to be discussing. That's right. All right. You want to start it off while I pull up my notes? I'm sure, sure. Yes. So Joran is, uh, takes place in 1931, I believe, uh, exact date and is uh is in japan in that era and this show overall i don't know it's like it's sort of a uh, mystery in the sense that only a little little bits are being unveiled and there's a lot of reveals and mm-hmm. i don't know i had a hard I, I liked it it looked really cool and i like the the main character named sawa um but she looks really cool um her just design is uh is her name yuki yuki sawa uh, I she's mostly Wait. referred to as Sawa. I think the little the little her little sister is Yuki. Mm, Yuki Mura is the name, and and Asahi is the younger sister. That's probably sister. the yeah surnames maybe or. Oh okay. Yeah, that's what I have is just Yuki oh, okay. Mura. So, so I, I didn't hear anyone refer to her as Sawa. Oh so. really? <laughs> I I, wow. I I just heard Yuki Mura and so uh, must be and Asahi refers to her as Yuki Anesan. Mm. So yeah, interesting. Um, but anyway, main character. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess we're spoiling it, but it's like she, um, 
is posing well she works she like manages this used bookstore Mm -hmm. but it's kind of a front for her being an assassin and in the episode Mm -hmm. she's hired to protect someone from being assassinated um Mm -hmm. and then we think she has this little sister but it's not actually her little sister there's a lot of like introducing and then immediately like nope none of that's true (laughs) yeah yeah so like when we first meet her she's dressed like a, a geisha i guess basically like yeah. white face and everything and uh yeah she's working in a bookstore and seems like a nice person and then she goes to what i assume is a, a house of ill repute um where at first we think that's where she's working um but then it turns out it's just her way to get into the spy lair uh that uh, she works at and then it's revealed that yeah she's this crazy assassin uh there's a lot that happens in this episode like yes. it just it zooms through it so much yeah. Um the animation looks really good. Mm, um it does. Th- that first opening sequence, so like the pre title sequence, um like the animation style on that was so good. And then after the yeah. titles it went to their normal animation style, which is still good, but just yeah. not quite as as over overly beautiful as that, that intro sequence was. Yeah, they save that for the fight scenes, um, it seems. But yeah, I do think overall it looked really good, like especially with like the lighting. There was a lot of moody, like dark scenes that didn't look like cheap, you know, it looked it looked nice, mm-hmm. like just, you know. And there was occasional scenes where like the the 3D CG was, you know, visible, I guess, or noticeable. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't terrible. So, yeah, yeah, the animation overall was really good. Um and I think yeah, I think you covered everything that's in my notes about, you know, um yeah the younger sister thing, which isn't revealed till the end of the episode, but, um, yeah. I, my mate, my, I liked it, but my biz, biggest complaint was, uh, I just felt like it raised more questions than it gave answers. Yeah. Like where it was to the point where like, I feel like I don't even know these characters, but I know all these things are happening and I feel mm. like I should care, but like I, it's just too fast. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think there was enough to make me interested in learning more about them, but yeah, they hadn't really involved me enough in the characters at this point either. Uh, the other thing that you, you didn't mention that I do have in my notes is there's like these blue blood demi human beast things or something like that seems to be sort of the main, a main plot point that, uh, mm. you know, those are the people that they're fighting for the most part. Although they, yeah. they seem to be sort of like uh, subordinates of some other organization that's, I, I guess trying to overthrow the government is what it seemed like. Um, I don't know. A lot of it's pretty unclear even after watching this episode, to be honest. And there's, it doesn't spoon feed anything, that's for sure. Um, But it's just kind of like, oh, this is happening. But uh, yeah, she, our main character has these powers and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She also, she is also a blue blood. Yeah. uh, As they call them in the show, so. Or I think they call be, them something else too. Well, it seems to be related because she ha- she had a like a bird that like this white bird. I don't know I right. birds, but that like seemed to be connected to her power when she would transform somehow. But yeah, yeah. unclear. And then <laughs> that other, she was fighting this other guy who had like more of a some sort of wild cat, like a tiger. I don't know. It was like some you know, it's like a different animal. So I was like, okay, like they mm. can some animals are involved somehow in mm, this. Uh, they each have their own spirit animal or something. I guess. Yeah, something like that that's curious um but it's interesting having like the supernatural like fighting and um you know thing happening mixed with like this sort of period drama and to to what mm. you were saying it's yeah it does seem like there's some sort of like military coup or like there's mm. some underhanded dealings and like political kind of intrigue that's going on that's an interesting yeah. mix of of those two things yeah, and I got I got more that she's like a, a spy of some sort. I didn't really get the assassin thing, I guess, okay. right away until until the end thing when when we see how she met Asahi, the the girl. Well, for me, it was in one of the scenes um, that an example where things just happen too quickly. Where she goes to this uh, sort of brothel or kind mm. of place you were talking about, and she walks into the one of the rooms, and one of the rooms, and one of the geishas is you know servicing a client. Uh, she's on top of him. And then um, she, you know, our main character walks in, and and the girl turns around, and it's like, oh hey, and then she just immediately kills the guy. Yeah, uh, like he says something, you know, some like comedic line, and like boom, he's like, you know, right. Uh, his neck is yeah, <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so and it happens so fast, but I was like, okay, they're assassins, like they just kill people that like uh, like there was nothing, there was nothing uh, um, 
I don't know. It was just so I done mean, so casually I, that it was I, like I guess that's, that's bizarre. I, I, I did get that that the the blonde haired girl who's the one who was yeah in the room that killed the guy, that she was yeah, like an assassin or something working for the same organization, spy organization, I guess. I just didn't really get that that what are we calling her? Yukimura? Um what yeah. was Sawa Sawa, is what you have? Yuki, yeah, we'll have to look that up, but perhaps <laughs> that is her full name. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um Anyway, I didn't really get that she was like an assassin, really, just that she was working with this organization that mm. employed assassins, I guess. But she was, yeah. she felt like more of a spy sort of thing to me, I guess. That's fair. I just assumed it. But yeah, definitely, definitely spy, like, yeah, espionage stuff going on. Yeah. And, um, and it's got a lot of weird fantasy sci-fi-ish sort of elements to it that haven't been explained at all, um, hopefully in the future. Yeah. But for now, you know, it's a, it's a decent show. I gave it I gave it a six out of ten. Um, it's good enough to watch another one. So funnily enough, well, it was because I when I do in the ratings this time because last time we had a false start in uh, in winter mm. we started in the podcast, um, but I used a letter grade. But I decided to switch, make it simpler. Anyway, uh, oh, well then I'll change mine. No, <laughs> we have to be different. <laughs> um, no, I also gave it a six. Um, oh, okay. And I'm just doing yeah. whole numbers. Yeah, me not too. halves. Yeah. yeah, I figured you were. Uh, so yeah, six. Uh, six to me seem fair. I'm interested, but I'm not sold. Yeah, I need more. Yeah, it's got some proven to do to to move up, and it could certainly mm. move itself down if it uh, yeah. does things wrongly. Yeah, Thre- I mean, it, it's putting a lot of weight on like these threads need to be resolved and like justifiably, you know, in like a in a believable way. <laughs> yeah. It's all right from out of out of the gate, it's already like, all right, there's a lot going on here. Like it's better all tied together. <laughs> but I, I have faith to check back on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely check out another episode. Mm. So um and uh, I guess I can say what the next one is. I just have to switch tabs real quick. Uh oh. Godzilla Singular Point, a.k.a. Godzilla SP. So um, this is one that is being released on Japanese TV and is on Netflix outside of, you know, Western territories. So um, it is available in uh, certain means. (laughs) There are ways to watch it if you want to. But since it is a Netflix show and it is not coming out on Netflix in the United States or England, from my understanding, uh, during this season, we won't actually be discussing it this season. Um, we'll wait until, you know, the whole thing drops on Netflix in presumably July. And then, uh, maybe, maybe do a deep dive on it. If we both decide to watch it, I'm watching it as it comes out either way. So, I mean, even if I don't talk about it, I'm still going to be watching it. And, uh, (laughs) I, uh, first impressions, can we get it? I I recommend it. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's a, some of the animation is a little not the best and some of the characters that I in and story stuff feels a little uh, immature, I guess. Um, not really childish, but I don't know. But overall, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's mecha-ish, I okay. guess. Like there's definitely some mecha hints in it. I haven't seen a whole ton of that yet, um, but it didn't drive me out. It's, uh Yeah. I, I like the characters. I like the story. I like, I want to see where it's going. Um, nice. So yeah, I would, at this point I would recommend it, um, but we'll see how I feel at the end of the season, I guess, and whether we decide to watch it or not. This is shaping up to be a summer of Godzilla. Oh yeah. What other Godzilla is there? Well, the Godzilla versus King Kong movie just came out oh, this month. Not, not anime though. No, no, but I'm okay. just saying this combined. I mean, the net it should be out of Netflix jail, you know, sometime this summer. Um, right. So that combined with with uh, I mean, mm. yeah, I think that I think that movie, that new movie, grossed more um, because of COVID, grossed more than any movie in 2020. <laughs> um, oh. So I don't know. It could be you know, it's, it's teeing it up for the animated to knock it out of the park. It'll be on Netflix. Everyone will watch it off the high of uh, yeah, maybe Godzilla. Yeah, I guess that's possible. But uh, sweet, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I obviously, uh, uh, you have a means of watching it, but I'm I'm waiting for the its sentence to be over in in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks it looks good in both like animation and story. I, you know, can't really say great yet, but you know, yeah, it's it's pretty solid. Mm. Seems cool. Um, what do we got next? Sweet. 
Sushi Sumo. Oh, this is another one just like General Manager of Baby that isn't available no. anywhere yet. So we'll skip over that one. And the next one we're also going to skip over because they took a week off. Um, I guess we should say what it is. Uh, so I'm a Spider, So What is continuing uh, from the previous season. Uh, they put out 12 episodes in the previous season and they took a week off. And then they're putting out 12 more episodes uh, in this coming season. So, oh, okay. so this is a week off, I guess. Um, we are going to at some point talk about, you know, winter shows that we watched. Um, so I guess I could talk about that now, how uh, um, a spider yeah, has shaped up could, so far. Uh, yeah. Since it's on the list in this place for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's actually the last new show that in our in this list. So. Oh, yeah. All right. So might as well just segue. Might as well, yeah. Looks like we're moving into stuff from last season. So last season continuing, we've got So I'm a Spider, So What? Also known as uh, Kumo Desu Ga Nani Ka. I think I said that right. Kumo? Kumo? What's spider? Kumo. A spider? I think so. Oh, okay. Kuma is bear. Yeah. You know, Kumo. Yeah. I, yeah. I was just and, kidding. I'm, and, lear- I'm and, learning things. And Kamo is duck. Oh, um, and there's there's a whole bunch of them that really sound like really similar and like get mixed up in my head. But kumo, kumo. So if there's like yeah, a, an emergency cool. in Japan involving a, an animal, and you're frantically trying to tell yeah. someone, it could easily be. A... Yeah, there's a giant monkey, spider, duck over there. <laughs> spider monkey could be any one of those. <laughs> um, but um, yes. Yeah, Spider Show. Yeah. I have not it's seen the Spider Isekai, as I called it uh, last season. So um, I did mention this in our what we're going to watch. Um, I dropped it last season because I got bored with it, um, and then a couple of weeks later, I I don't know, felt it beckoning me. I guess mm. uh, it was. I was just curious, like where it went, because there was some sort of open ended things that I had left. It, when I left it, there were some things that were kind of open-ended and I was mm, still curious about where they went. So I picked it back up, started watching it, and I have now watched all of the episodes, mm-hmm. as I said during the previous what we're going to watch it thing. Um, so I, I don't know how much I need to really talk about this one because I covered most of that in our what we're going to watch, but mm-hmm. uh, I like it. It definitely, you know, episode 12, it got to a nice ending point for the arc um, and it seems to be ramping up to uh to start off this next season mm. or continuation of the season uh pretty well okay. so and it'll finally hopefully start getting into more of the the curiosities that have been you know mm. taunting me since i started watching it so you got kind of bored with it mm-hmm. or disinterested at some point yeah and then you kept thinking about it, so you picked it back up, and you've watched, you finished the season. Yeah. Did it has it won you over at a point where like you're gonna? I mean, you're, it sounds like you're gonna keep watching it, of course. But like, will yeah. you definitely finish this season, or are you still waiting to get like more before you're like sold on it? It really depends on what they do with it, because like I say, they seem to some of the questions that I had early on that I was waiting for them to answer, they haven't answered. But it mm-hmm. looks like they're going to start answering those questions. Okay. Now. Yeah. And depending on what those answers are, mm. it could it could drive me out of it. But uh, yeah. I don't think they're going to go that way. But you know, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't that. know. My I I'm going into this intending to watch you know all twelve of the next twelve episodes, but it's entirely possible that I I might at some point drop it again, and then I might come back to it again. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of the uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Uh, she has that same sort of cuteness factor that Rumuru has, and like story wise, there are some you know serious pal- parallels that you can draw between the two. Mm. It does it does you know make itself distinct in some ways. Um, and you were drew to it, I remember initially because it reminded you of the slime isekai. Yeah, yeah, I think original. so. I mean, I think that uh, that's part of why I decided to start watching it. I I generally like don't like isekais so i i tend to avoid them um and there are you know many 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 exceptions to that so when i say i generally don't like them it's really only about like 50 percent, probably but uh yeah this one i i think yeah it had some things that reminded me of the things that i liked about that time i got reincarnated as a slime and that was part of the reason i decided to watch it and then 
as I was watching it, I kind of felt like, yeah, it's just sort of doing the same thing that, you know, Slime Isekai did. Mm. Um, and I think that's part of the reason that I dropped it. And then that the thing that was different was what drew me back. Okay. Yes. Nice. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a solid show. I don't, I don't think it's like going to be going down in history books as one of the greatest anime ever made or anything, but it's, um, it's interesting. It's mm. cute. It's funny. It's, you know, yeah, all of the things I like in anime. So, yeah. Well, well, we'll keep watching. I will tune in to when we hear more of it. All right. So next on my list, it says special challenge. Uh, do you know what that is, George? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think it's been uh, <laughs> kept from me. Uh, so I decided uh, to devise a sort of special challenge. A lot of times George and I get together and we end up talking about old anime that we have watched and, uh, I haven't seen a lot of things that uh, he talks about, and uh, he hasn't seen a lot of the things that I talk about often. So There's a lot of anime out there. There is a lot. There's so much. I mean, you're going back through the whole history of anime? Yeah. Mm. There's no way you can Tons. keep up. So I decided that this, uh, you know, for this season, we would do a sort of special additional anime um, for each of us to watch. I will pick one for you to watch. You will pick one for me to watch. And uh, we'll find out what those are next week. Um, I want to give you time to, you know, okay. really figure out what it is that you want to do. You want to make me sweat. Well, I just, I want, <laughs> I want, I want to give you time to think about it and decide mm, fair. what you're going to pick. I don't want you to just be on the spot having to pick off the top of your head. You know, that is exciting, though. You know, think about something that you, you know, I'm not going to try to torture you. Something you might like. <laughs> yeah, the, our difference in anime taste. Um, has shown itself in the past. Like mm -hmm. when we, when we initially started, you know, doing our just watching anime together thing every, every week. Um, and we sort of devised a system wherein we would each sort of vote on whether we keep watching something or not. And, uh, there weren't many agreements. <laughs> there was a lot of disagreements. I, yeah. I guess, no, that's not true. We, we largely agreed on what not to watch. Yes. Um, yes. But what to continue watching, it, it often went 50-50. It was, 50, mixed. 50. It was yeah. mixed. It was very, very few that we were both like, yes. Yeah, there is some overlap, but yeah, um, that is true. I mean, it's honestly, we talk about anime together anyway, despite that. Yeah. Um, but it's part of the reason I wanted to do this podcast with you is because our tastes are so different. So we cover a wider, you know, array of mm -hmm. things. We're not just being, you know, going to agree with everything the other person uh, likes or, you know, agree with their positions on why they like it or why they think it's, you know, worthwhile. But yeah. And I think that's probably apparent from our, what we're going to be watching where, I mean, yes, I have more shows, but, um, the overlap, um, I don't know. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a fair amount that like you're watching that I'm not watching and mm -hmm. there's ones that I'm watching that you're not watching. And there's just a few that we're both watching. Yeah. So, yeah. So, there's that. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll pick some shows and uh, we'll start this special challenge next week. Yep. And then uh, then all we got left here is winter leftovers, which means I have to switch tabs again so that I know which shows we're going to be talking about. Let me find this really quick. You know what? I it, it's on the it's on the web page. I should just open the web page at anime.toyboat.net. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's on the schedule. I I, I have it all here. So oh dear. let me just let me just sort of run run through some and uh It's gonna be mostly you because quick, I yeah. We I signed up for way too much mm. when we tried to do this before and uh, you followed through. So this is this is you doing a victory lap and but I'm curious uh, what you liked and what was good last I mean, uh, yeah, season. I, I watch it on an anime regardless of whether I'm talking into a microphone afterwards <laughs> or not. So um so yeah, I just sort of, uh, I don't know that the order that these are in, probably the order that they debuted in or something, but uh, X-Arm you were watching, uh, did you did you end up dropping it? Um, no, I just... Or you just, it's on hold still? Yeah, essentially. Okay. All right. Um, I, I watched just, uh, the first couple episodes, I, I believe. Okay. I was just wondering if it like drove you out, like if it did something like not to really. make you not watch it anymore. No, it was still enjoyably bad for me, but okay. I didn't get that deep into it. Mm. It's also one of those things, even though it's enjoyable, it's still bad. So it's not like, oh my God, I can't wait to see more. It's right. like watching a fun train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, and then uh, Nanan Biori is the next one on my list here. And uh, Nanan Biori, uh, oh, sorry, Nanan Biori Nonstop is the name of this season. Um, and it is Nanan Biori, so it's, you know, the same as the rest of Nanan Biori. They definitely didn't lose anything this season. And, uh, yeah, it was it was great from my perspective. But, you know, some people aren't into the that sort of show, I guess, um, which is just, you know, a very chill uh, slice of life. Yashike, healing anime, whatever. Mm. Cute girls doing cute things, if you want to call it that. It's uh But it's I like it. I I would like to watch more of it, but it's I don't know. It's it calms me down. Like it has a tone and a pacing that is very sort of meditative and yeah. you know, draws you in even though it's it's just more aesthetic than anything. Like there's yeah. no explosions, there's no real drama, you know. It's uh it's pretty peaceful and serene. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if you need a show to help you mellow out after a hard week of work or something, check out Non Non Biori. You can watch you can watch them in any order. It doesn't matter. You can just put the episodes on shuffle. Um, yeah, you're never going to be like, crap, I fell asleep to Non Non Biori last night. It's, actually, it, it's not entirely true because in this third season, they did have some characters that were introduced, I guess. So if you did mm-hmm. just completely put it on shuffle, there'd be characters popping in and popping out <laughs> that you wouldn't. <laughs> But overall, it doesn't really matter because that's not really the point of the show. Yeah. Um, and then next up, I have Yatagome on my list. Um, kan, uh, what is the name, full name of it? Yatagome-chan, Kansatsu Nikki, or something like that. Um, this one, I paused midway through the season. I just sort of stopped watching it. It's a, a, another slice of life. Um, it, it's got a little bit more of a hectic pace um and it's not that i don't like it it's just that there was so much good slice of life last season and it really didn't look like there was going to be much good this season that i wanted to reserve one so <laughs> i've reserved yatagami chan uh for this season um just in case these slice of life offerings this season are you know less than what i require so you're not caught up on it is that what you're saying i'm not i think oh, okay. i watched four or five yeah oh, okay. so i didn't i didn't complete it but you know it's it's slice of life, you know. I mean, there's not a whole lot to go into a review about a slice of life show. It's it's pretty difficult, other than to say, you know, it yeah. makes me happy to watch it, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, so I just I just sort of have it, you know, reserved um, to be able to watch it in the future mm. when I run out of good slice of life things to watch. All right. Um, and then I've got Kimono Jihen. Mm, yes. Okay. Um pretty good i i expected them to sort of wrap up the season a little bit more and like not leave leave it so open Mm. they did leave it a little bit open um i don't know i'm trying i'm trying to do these like sort of spoiler free uh without like diving too deep into the plot of what happens during the show Mm. but uh the the ending despite the fact that it was sort of open-ended and sort of closed at the same time it was it was a pretty good ending, I think. It definitely left me wanting more, but but also fine if there never is any more. I think mm. so. Okay. Uh, and then we've got Jobless Reincarnation, uh, Mushoku Tensei. Um, so this one, I guess, this one has become a popular topic of conversation in the anime community this this season. Mm. Uh, a lot of people arguing about uh, things things that are incorporated into the show that aren't really incorporated into the plot. I don't think a lot of people sort of defending it saying, Oh, well, this is how it was back then. If you were like, you know, a rich Lord, you could have your way with your servants if you wanted to. Um, and yes, that is true. But is there a reason to include it in this show? Like, does it serve the plot in any way? And I would say, no, it, it doesn't really, I want, I watched the whole thing and it does sort of break away from that, but there's there's a lot of H E stuff in the beginning that really doesn't serve the plot. It's it's just fan service. So I think anyone trying to defend the show, you know, saying that it's not fan service, that it's, you know, important to show these things for whatever reason. Um mm. yeah. But you're you were able to enjoy it uh despite that? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. Mm. Um, it it's was just, just little bits and pieces. And like I say, it was like fan service. It was just mm. sort of thrown in as fan service. You know, every once in a while, um, it didn't need to be there. Mm. Uh, so, 
you could watch it, like you could go through and cut all of those parts out and watch it and you'd be 100% fine. Mm. Um, and save some time too. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it, didn't, it didn't really bother me, but yeah, it's, mm. uh, you know, I don't understand why people think that, I don't know, I should probably just cut this last bit out because I don't know what I want to say. Um, because if I, you got a hot take. I mean, I, I have things that I would say, but it would sound <laughs> like I'm being sort of a, a jerk. Yeah. Um, yeah. which I'm going to try not to do. Okay. Yeah. Respectable. So then we've got uh last dungeon. Um, so suppose a kid from the last dungeon moved to a starter town, something like that. Uh, it's called. Yes. Um, uh, this one actually was sort of a surprise uh, sleeper hit for me. Um, you know, looking at it, it looked like a little bit sort of a kids-ish show, like animation style-wise. Um, and it's, you know, an isekai without actually being an isekai because it's, you know, this kid who is super powerful, but where he's from, it's not considered super powerful. And then he moves to a place where he is like overpowered. Uh, the way they handle it is is good because he's just sort of oblivious to how overpowered he is, uh, unlike most isekai where, you know, they get the power and they're like, oh my God, I'm so powerful. I can, you know, and they want to do use all their powers and stuff. And he's just, you know, oblivious to it. He's oblivious to a lot of things. And it, yeah. it's played for comedy and it's funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's comedic overall. And uh, yeah, I, I like this show quite a bit, actually. It was uh, It was pretty well done as a sort of spoof of isekai. Um, well, is it like a sitcom or is it like they're going on an adventure? I mean, there's an overarching story, but th there's a lot of mini stories that are sort of episode by episode. Okay. But there is like one, you know, overall arc throughout the, the season as well. Um, cool. And it resolved fairly well, a little open-ended, but you know, mm. pre pretty well resolved, I think. So cool. yeah. And it's a, it's a good, I mean, it's, it's light. It's not like heavy or anything like that. It's, mm. it's, it is a comedy and it's, it's fairly light, but it, it did have some of the, the H-E stuff too, just mm. very, very occasionally that was just like, why, why'd you put that in there? Like, I guess because they thought it would be funny and maybe what's funny in Japan is different than what's funny to me. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 It just didn't click. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a good show, and I would recommend it. Uh, next up on the list is Other Side Picnic. Um, I dropped this one. Uh, it just, I just didn't care anymore, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, this one I watched the most of of any show from last season, and that was probably like four or five episodes. Yeah, that's about how far I got. I got okay. four, and I was just like, it's done. You know, it came the next episode came out, and I like looked at you know looked at it in my list of things to watch, and I just was like, what else is there? What else can I watch instead of this, you know? <laughs> and then I kept doing that. So yeah, I, uh, I never went back to it and I don't, I don't blame I, you. I don't regret it. Like it's just, I don't know where it was going, but it didn't really seem like it was going much of anywhere. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was just, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, not, not a fan, I guess if I'm wrong about that, someone will probably let me know in comments somewhere. Um, so that I can, you know, maybe go back and look at it again. If, you really think that it's worth my time. Not that my time is more valuable than anyone else's, but you know. Well, you know, reassurances can be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Motivating at least. Yeah, I mean, knowing that at least one other person out there in the world liked it, you know, yeah. is going to And I'm sure that's the case, but yeah. They gotta make a good argument. Yeah. Um, I, I don't blame you. I mean, I I was curious, you know, at watching it, but then clearly not engaged enough to finish it, so it probably speaks for itself. Yeah. I mean, it looked really good, like animation, great and everything. And yeah, it had so much going for it. It just like the story just mm, didn't, didn't pull me in, didn't do anything. Yeah. It was sort of just. At a certain point, it didn't feel like it knew where it was going. Like, yeah. Kind of meandering. Yeah. Meandering would be the word that I would use as well. Um, anyway, speaking of anime that have uh, a girl with two different colored eyes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, heterochromia. <laughs> yeah. Next up is Wonder Egg Priority. Oh, man. Which, this is on my to-watch list. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. This one had some twists in it and unexpected stuff um, a lot, actually. And I can't talk about it because I don't want to ruin it for you <laughs> or anyone else. Um, but, 
it, it left me wanting more at the end. I don't think it closed up enough as much as I wanted, but I think that they've announced that there's a uh, a special or a second season or something. I think they've announced something there's already. Something coming. Yeah, there's more of it coming uh, at some point. What in do the you future, rate so. it as a, as is? Um. Yeah, it didn't end like super good, but because the story doesn't mm, feel completely told. It's, it's like a seven or an eight. I actually okay. don't remember. I'd have to, you know, get out my list to tell you the actual number that I ended up giving it after yeah, having finished the final episode. But somewhere in that about. range, seven or eight. It might be an eight, actually. Like nice. overall, I think it, overall, I think it's an eight. It mm-hmm. it ended not badly, but just not as good as I would have liked. I guess. Um, Once I get around to that, we'll have to dig in. Yeah, yeah, it's. It, I think. It, I think it's worth a watch. It's. Uh, it's sort of. It, it's heavy. It's not. It's not light like the last dungeon. It's. It's. A, it's heavier mm. themed and like. Yeah. You know. I mean, right from the get go, there were because I saw the first couple episodes, but there was themes yeah. of suicide and depression and. Yeah. Yeah, not fitting in and that sort of dark. Yeah. So there's there's a lot more of that. Yep. Mm. <laughs> cool. Uh. So yeah, we will we'll be talking more about that. Uh, at some point in the future. All right, I think I only have a few more that I'm actually going to talk about here. So uh, we've got Dr. Stone's Stone Wars. Um, I watched the whole thing. I am at this point unsure if they come out with another season or something, if I'm going to watch any more. It was fine. It just didn't grab me the way the first season did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it never felt like a chore getting through it because it's, you know, it's a fun watch, but I'm not as interested in it as I once was, mm-hmm. I guess. Um and I think they did announce that there's another season or something coming, and I saw some art from it. It looks like they're on a boat, so, you know, One Piece ripoff, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, next up is Laid Back Camp. Um, it's another of these, you know, Healing Yudu Iyashike. Yudu Camp, yeah. Um, healing Iyashike and Slice of Life shows. Uh yeah. I, I, I love it as much as I love the first season. So if you love the first season, you'll probably love the second season. Uh, again, it's a slice of life, so it's, it's not much I can really say about it. It's enjoyable if you enjoy that sort of thing. It's the uh, cute girls going camping. Yeah. They love to camp. They do. Yeah. And there's, you know, surprisingly, the b- beginning of the season, there wasn't quite as much camping as you would expect. And... I was a little disappointed in the first few episodes because it was a lot of them sort of talking to each other, um, but they were never all together in one place and talking. It was like one talking to the other and her talking to someone else. And then, you know, it was a lot of that, like for the Mm -hmm. first couple of episodes. So I was like, have they really just gone off the rails here? But then it all came together. So yeah. Okay. Nice. It all came together. Um, Next up, Heaven's Design Team. I dropped this one after, I think, three, maybe two episodes. Um, I wasn't into it. Uh, and then next on my list is The Promised Neverland, which, as I mentioned, we have an entire show about The Promised Neverland. Uh, you can check it out on our channel, previous episodes. Uh, we've got Cells at Work and Cells at Work Code Black. Um, I wasn't watching the original Cells at Work. Uh, I did watch Code Black for a while. I... I guess I did the same thing that I did with the original Cells at Work season one is I just kind of like, I enjoyed it while I was watching it and then I stopped watching it for like unknown reasons. It's not that there was anything to dislike about it. It's just the concept had played itself out in my head enough that I didn't need to see any more of it, I guess. Mm. So yeah, I stopped watching it after, I don't know, six, I think maybe. Okay. Um, And it might be something that I'll pick up eventually, but I I doubt it because I never went back and watched the uh, Cells at Work season one. So, Um, and then we've got uh, Tomozaki Kun, um, which is another one that, like, going into it, I wasn't sure if it would be something that I would like, but I ended up watching the whole season, so I guess it was something that I liked at least enough to watch the whole season. Um, I, I explained the plot in our you know winter episode. It's a a boy who's really good at a game um, decides to meet up with the second best player in the world at this game. And it turns out to be a girl that he goes to high school with. And then she sort of says, well, you know, you're so good at this game. Why do you suck so much at life? And uh, so then she decides to teach him how to not suck at life. Um, And it's, you know, cute, uh, not, not super romantic or drama y or anything like that, but there are like romantic notes throughout it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that explanation, I know you 
probably are not thinking that sounds like something you would like either. But I think if you watched enough of it, you would probably like it as well. Um, it The concept doesn't sound great, and that's what I went in thinking. Mm. But then once I started watching it, I was like, yeah, this is fun and cute and, you know. It doesn't yeah. sound awful. It sounds like it could be uh, funny and interesting. But um, I guess I, I would, I, from your description, I would prefer there to be like, develop developing the romantic relationship and that you know having some sort of stakes or you know uh some sort of you know but it sounds like more like kind of there sick, are, there sitcom-y are, kind of like no there are hints towards there being romantic relationships developed between a few different characters um and it, i mean in the end should i not say that well he can leave it at that i suppose <laughs> yeah um uh, that's good to know um yeah, just so many, I mean, so many stories in general, but so many anime that have romantic elements are so unwilling to commit to anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, developing or or stopping, you know, like real life would be, um, they kind of just keep it in this, like, simmer of, like, will they, won't they. You know? Right, yeah. And, and, Which and is this, fun. I mean, the, the, the romance is not the, the central theme yeah. of this show. It's just that there's some side things going on that have, you know, romantic notes to them. Oh, I okay. guess. So it's kind of you know. flirting with that. Yeah. Yeah. The central theme is mostly about Tomozaki not being, um, not growing into a neat, I guess, <laughs> you know, not, uh, not becoming a, a, a loser, um, sort of learning to come out of his shell. Yeah. I guess that's it. And, uh, and that is the list of everything from last season that I had to talk about this episode. So thanks for sticking in there with me. That's uh, good to know. I was curious, you know, since I had a lot of shame for not following through with anything last season. Shame. <laughs> shame. But I was curious where you were at, uh, how you liked things. And you got me. I, was, I already wanted to finish Wonder Egg Priority. I haven't had time to mm-hmm. squeeze that in. But I'm going to do it. I already was, already was, but you got me pumped uh, even more about it. So. I will yeah. definitely do that, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna commit to things this season, so the shame will will wash <laughs> away from me. All right, sounds good. All right, well, I guess is there anything else we were supposed to talk about during this show? I don't think so. No, I think that's that should it. be it for today. All right, we'll be back in a couple of days. That's right. Um, yeah, so this should be coming out on the seventh, um, less than twenty four hours from the time that we record this. Um, <laughs> George looks less certain about that than I thought I was. <laughs> they don't care about that. That's <laughs> Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. You don't care about when we're recording? All right. <laughs> anyway, uh yeah, you can uh, find us on all the socials, tell us why we're wrong, uh why we're right, what you like, what uh what you hate, all of that stuff. What we should be watching that we're not. Yeah. So, like I say, all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, <laughs> everything. Uh, that Reddit. You can find us everywhere at Unlike Anime, U M L I K E A N I M E. Um, and uh, if you really like the show and you want it to sound better, um, get produced on time, you want to actually see our faces while we're recording, we do have a Patreon. I'm not begging you for money. I'm just saying that it's there if you want it. And if you don't want any of those things, then just <laughs> continue as as is. Yeah, you you we're we're giving Eddie's. it. Away. We're giving it away for free. You can listen for free all you want. Do not feel obligated to give us anything on Patreon ever. Um, I just set it up because I know that there will be people asking for it at some mm-hmm. point. If they really want it, they'll seek it out. Yeah. We do We do have our first patron. Um, That's right. I don't remember his screen name, so I, I probably shouldn't say who it is, I guess. But And he didn't even donate at a level to get a shout out. So you know what? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. You know much. what? Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for... Uh, <laughs> For, for being our first patron. We do really appreciate it. Um, yes, sincerely. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. And uh, we'll see you all in a couple days where we talk about Saturday anime. See you next time. 